Uh, hi guys, um, today we're going to be looking at compression, um, you know, A1 has, I'd say, different compressors in it, there are three main types I'm going to say, but we're going to be looking at two of those today, just because the other one's kind of more for mastering, um, so yeah, the first one we're going to look at it's just the standard compressor. Um, compression is important because you know it keeps your sounds uh, level. Because what it basically does is make louder things quieter and quieter things louder. So it levels out, you know, your 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 sounds or whatever you're compressing. Um, in excess, I must say it can be damaging I think it's better to really get hands on with with your dynamics uh, in your track you know so if something is um, and I'll show you guys how to do this in a different video but if something's loud and you know but in this in you know same sound or if for example it could be a vocal but let's say it's loud in one section or one part in the verse and it's quieter and another part in the verse and then it's super loud it's better to kind of handle those dynamics by automating the volume instead of compressing but what I do like about compression is that little bits of compression uh, in, in uh, you know moderate, moderate amounts of usage uh, can create a nice loud mix um, so yeah we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that today Uh, so the first thing we'll compress, uh, just because we'll EQ in drum and bass, so I think we'll go ahead and compress in drum and bass. Uh, we're going to compress the bass. And what I like about compression, it makes things sound closer. Now I'm going to go ahead and explain the controls to you guys. Um, so. Don't worry about this side chain thing for now, that's going to get explained in another video. All you guys really need to know is threshold. So the threshold is kind of the, the deciding where, um, you know, in the volume that's going to start compressing. Uh, and then you've got ratio. So for example, a 2 to 1 ratio means for every 2 dB that goes in, 1 dB comes out. So the ratio is how much you're compressing by. Then you've got attack. And then attack is basically how long it takes that compression to kick in. So if there's a kick, and let's say that, you know, the kick has a very fast transient, um, because it's a, it's a percussive instrument, if your attack is slow, it's going to compress the, the kick straight away, versus if, you know, if, oh sorry, if, if your attack is fast, going to compress the kick straight away versus if it's slower it will allow some of them peaks to come through before it starts compressing resulting in a snappier kick um, so you know these are these these kind of shape your compression whereas the and the release um, is basically how long it takes the compression to reset uh, so if you've got a long release it's going to keep compressing um, and it's not going to reset um, so I'll go ahead and show you those now. So what I like to do is have my release fast and my attack slow to begin with and my uh, ratio at 2. I never really use more than 4 and I rarely use 4, I'm always kind of using 2 to 1. Um, I think 4 is too excessive. Also, you've got the makeup gain. So after you compress, you're gonna to want to make up for for the volume that you attenuated. So by adding an automatic makeup, it does it for you. Um, but if you want to do that manually, you just have to 
work with the output here. Um, so I can show you both ways. So with my tackle pool, there's some peaks coming through, um, and you can see it start to compress. So this, this is what, how we know that this is kind of a good point. I'm just going to go ahead and reduce my attack. So I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but as I reduced the speed of my attack, it started to compress more. And that's because it's catching more, because my attack, the attack's not slow, so that means compressor's kicking in quicker, therefore it's catching more. So that's it without the compressor. And with the compressor. Might actually go ahead and take off a bit more to attack off that. You also have this thing called knee. Um, so if I do a full knee, as you can see, it's kind of like a a curve in the in the compression kind of graph. And what that kind of does is it allows the compression to be just a bit more lenient um, so the compression begins gradually uh, you know if, if, if I have a hard knee as you can see it's almost like there's no curve it just compresses so yeah if this I think I'm going to leave the knee on what was it 6 dB and yeah that's basically how you use uh, this is just the common compressor enable and, and that's how basically how you use it or any compressor for that matter Okay, so next I'm going to show you guys how to use the bus compressor. Um, so we're going to do that on the drums. Uh, the bus compressor in Ableton is called the glue compressor. And it basically works the same way. This compressor basically is based off uh, the SSL G4000 uh, bus compressor. Um, which I believe is a VCA compressor and you guys should also know this just in case you're using compressors outside of Ableton there's different circuitries and compressors so VCA is kind of like what you'd use for drums um, I think it stands for voltage controlled amplifier uh, and, it's, and it's basically a fast reacting compressor so that's something you would want to use on percussive sounds whereas an opto compressor which is uh, a bit slower in reaction you'd want to use for, you know, like basses, guitars, vocals, and you also have FET compressors, which are, this is stands for far, uh, build, build effect or fast effect transistors. Um, and basically they're super fast as well. So you could use them on drums. Um, these are just kind of, they're not rules, I guess. They're just guidelines um, that would, that will uh, be helpful for when you're choosing a compressor to use for your instruments but this is something really good to use on drums um, and we're going to go ahead and use it so again I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the tack uh, fast release and it's going to compress a bit harshly just so we can really hear it so see as I take down the attack, it compresses more. So I really want to let some of the peaks through. But at the same time, capture it's a bit of them as well.
and as you can see that compressor's setting even with a lack of 0.2 millisecond release. So let's hear that without the compressor. So the compressor just makes it sound a bit closer, a bit more controlled of volume. And the glue compressor is very good to use, you know, on your drum tracks or your group tracks, uh, even if you're mastering, to be honest, um, just because of the nature of it. It's very good for like making things sound one, um, and that's what it's definitely done with these drums. Just make them sound glued together. So yeah, that's compression for you guys, um, and I hope that's been useful.